you look at the equipment. That's what's going to make all your money. This is, this is why I've survived in the game of golf. And uh, I'm excited about the te technology here at Adams. I uh, love the driver. Uh, I've fallen in love with the hybrids. And, uh, you, you know, golf's a very fine line game. And at my age now, at 51, the three and the four iron, you know, it's, it's definitely it's been a hard shot for me. It used to be, the, you know, one of the niches in my game where I could always count on. Well, you know, now testing the hybrids, I found, you know, I've fallen back in love with the long iron game. And I think it's really going to improve, you know, my, my performance out on the tour next year. Uh, looking forward to playing the product. You know, I, that's the main reason why I've switched is the product. You know, you go to technology, you go in and look, you look at a company that's growing, you look at a company uh, that's designing, trying to get better, trying to get bigger. Uh, I'm all into that. I'm well, my expe expectations are high. I'm, I'm excited, you know, to carry the Adams brand next year. Uh, I'm excited, you know, to get out there 2010 was an off year for me. 2011's just been kind of a, a year of I played half on the PGA, half on the Champions. Uh, 2012, I still haven't decided exactly where I'm going. I think I'm going to spend more time on the PGA Tour. Uh, I think because I still feel in my heart, in my gut, that I, I, I still have something to prove out there on the PGA Tour. Um, we'll see. Uh, I think there's a lot left in me. Uh, I'm looking forward to the challenges of going out there and trying to get up into the top ten in the world again. Uh, you know, my three kids are grown, they're gone. I'm a, grand, you know, I'm a grandfather now. Uh, it's just Sandy and I, we're kind of honeymooning again. So uh, there's no reason for why I shouldn't refocus. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to the challenges. Uh, the PGA Tour is unbelievable. We've got a lot of new young talent coming out there. I'm the old guy, but you know what? Yeah, I, I'm the heckler. I'm the, you know, I'm the guy that aggravates them in the locker room. I, mean, I just got too many friends. Uh, my wife, you know, she, she's, she really does a lot with the Tour Wives Association out there. So um, I think, you know, everybody remembers what you do on the PGA Tour. Nothing against the Champions Tour. But I think you, you're made on the PGA Tour, and I still would love to somehow win a major. Uh, I'd like to get back, you know, competing for a major championship, and that's, that's my final goal on the PGA Tour. Well, you know, amateurs are at a big disadvantage. Uh, you know, for me, I can come in here, we've got the machines that tell me launch angles, spin rates, you know, all this that an amateur really don't want to know anything about, but as a professional, you need to know all these kind of things. And when an amateur goes to buy equipment, I think most amateurs, the biggest flaw I see with their, their misfit in today's, with their equipment. You know, they either got a shaft that's too, too stiff or a shaft that's too soft. Uh, they have the wrong loft, you know, they're trying to hit, you know, an 8.5 driver when they should be hitting a 10.5 or 11.5 driver. Uh, you know, people, what amateurs don't understand is spin is your friend. You know, and most of the time amateurs don't have enough spin on the golf ball. They, they can't spin it to begin with. They don't hit it down on enough. They don't compress it enough to put spin on the golf ball to make it react on the green. They're, they're always asking me, how do you make a ball back up? You know, and I'm like, it's, that's a tough question to answer when you've got a guy, you know, uh, who's trying to hit a five iron and, you know, he can't get it, you know, 30 feet in the air. You know, he's, he's hitting line drives. Uh, so to me, the, it's, it's not necessarily the golf swing. You know, it's, it's equipment. You know, they don't understand. There's a lot of tools out there. If it's hybrids, they can go. They need to throw all, they need to get rid of their four iron up and, or maybe even five iron and put hybrids in the bag. They're so much easier to hit. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer, and to me, that's where I think a lot of amateurs make their mistake is they're not fitted properly, you know, for their golf game. They need to spend a little bit of time. They're too tight with their money. They need to go out there, research it a little bit, and uh, just it's, it'll be the best money they've ever spent and, and get fitted for their equipment. Well, uh, my father taught me how to play golf. And my dad sold insurance. And coming from a small town, raised on a nine-hole golf course, what time I spent with my dad was playing golf. And, uh, you know, he smoked a big old cigar. And I, every time I smell a cigar, I always, my dad is always with me. Even though my dad's still alive. He's 87 years old. But, you know, you have great memories. And I have memories, you know, when you get out and you, you, you hear the sprinklers going and the, the smell of the grass. And, uh, great memories for me as a kid growing up, uh, seeing my dad. And he would lay on the ground. 
he, we had a little shag bag, and he'd tee up ball after ball for me, and I'd hit him, and I'd run pick him up, and uh, he'd be sitting there. He spent a lot of time. So the special times my dad and I spent together on the golf course. So that's that's great memories for me. That's one of the greatest things. Uh, that was like a labor of love for me. I was raised on the nine hole golf course, my country club, and I felt like. Uh, we had no other game in town. All my buddies couldn't come. I was fortunate enough to be a member there. My dad was a member, but uh, nobody. If you wanted to play golf in my town, you either had to drive 30 miles in a you know a radius around to either go to Bowling Green or to Nashville to play golf. So I felt like our town needed a public facility. So I bought 100. It's sitting on 300 acres now, but at the time I bought 152 acres and designed a little 18 hole. Boy, that's hard. I'm not. I know I'm never going to be an architect. I can tell you that and built a little 18-hole golf course, made it very affordable for, for anybody to play. I put in zoysia fairways, bent grass greens. Uh, it's always in great shape. My staff is great. Uh, it, it, to me, it's, a fun, it's out in the country. You're sitting on the swing. We've got wild turkey. We've got deer. We've got squirrels. It's, it's a very peaceful setting, and it, it, it's very pretty. And it's, it's exciting for the people to come out, and they always thank us. They enjoy it. Uh, and, you know, it just... Something that I've loved, I've been able to give back to my town. It's something I always wanted to do.